Welcome back to Stace on Wheels. I have finally chosen a cam for the 308 that is going to go into my HZ1 tonner. This is a quick update video just to let you know about the cam and also how the test fit went. So if you saw my first video introducing this 308, uh, you might already know that the, um, the block was already bored out to 60 thou and one of the cylinders was actually damaged. So I made the decision to uh, get the entire block re-sleeved. So it's back to standard bore. Now, because of that, I'm not building this engine for high performance. Uh, I reckon it is lucky to get a second lease on life. So the cam that I chose is for a bit of fun, really. Uh, it's designed for a, um, a fairly streetable RPM range, I think, of about 2,700 to 5,800 RPM. It should be a pretty lumpy idle, and I, I kind of want that. I like that sort of beast-like quality that a, that a V8 can have. So really, I have chosen this cam for this engine more for entertainment than for performance. So you already notice it's a Crow cam. It's an hydraulic flat tappet cam and it has, for both the intake and the exhaust, uh, a, um, a duration of 230 at 50 thou. The lift is 495 for both intake and exhaust and the lobe separation angle is 109 degrees and it has two degrees of advanced ground into it as well. So it's described as a street cam with a lumpy idle, which that sounds perfect to me. It's also designed for a rocker ratio of 1.65, which I already have in the Yellow Terra roller rockers that came with the engine. Uh, they look to be in great condition and they're really expensive if I wanted to buy some new ones. So I'm gonna clean them up uh, and all of that should be just dandy. So this cam did come in a kit. It came with performance single valve springs and retainers and collets or locks. And a Super Duty push rod set. Also hydraulic flat tappet lifters. And a double row timing chain set. Now the Yellow Terra heads that came with this 308 block are at the machine shop right now uh, and they are installing new guides and also uh, Viton valve stem seals. And they're gonna supply valves as well. I don't have a lot of detail on all of that yet. The exhaust valve seats for the heads are also gonna get modified for unleaded fuel. And the valve seats are gonna get a three angle grind as well. And I'm planning on reassembling the heads myself. I mean, that's really why I have this engine and why I'm rebuilding it is I just want to learn as many of the steps as I possibly can. So we did test fit this cam in the block um, just to make sure there was no kind of wiggle or slot between the journals and the bearings and also to check the end float as well. Uh, and beside that, it was good practice for me just to fit a cam in, in a block, which I've never done before, and it just seems to be one of those things that can go wrong pretty easily. So uh, as it turned out, there was no wiggle. There's a really nice tight fit and also a very smooth spin um, of the cam when it's in there. Uh, the end float, uh, we only measured that with feeler gauges just to get somewhere in the ballpark. And for uh, this Holden engine, um, Holden recommend uh, end float somewhere between 2 and 14 thou. And we got smack bang in the middle of that with 8 thou. Now, I'm not doing this on my own. Um, my husband, Scotty, he has a little bit of experience doing this kind of thing from way back in his youth. But our friend from way back when I was a teenager, I think I first met Gary, um, he uh, was a uh, Holden mechanic for 18 years and also uh, a car enthusiast for probably virtually his entire life. He's my supervisor, so he was kind of there just to make sure I was um, doing a good job and he gave me 10 out of 10 <laughs> for my cam insertion um, technique. 
What did make this easier was the fact that it's a bare block. So I could flip the block upside down and have one hand on the outside um, supporting or guiding the cam in and then another hand on the inside uh, just kind of helping to, to move it gently and keep it as straight as possible as it kind of the lobes moved through uh, past those bearings. So there was no damage to any of the bearings. There is a little bit of squirreling on, on some of the bearings, which um, Gary assures me is unavoidable, uh, but definitely no gouges or, or chips or anything like that. So I am pretty happy and I'm getting pretty excited now about starting to assemble this engine once I get the heads back. So if you're curious to keep following this 308 rebuild, uh, I do have a video coming up soon where I'll talk about all the parts that I got for it and, and, and share with you the very scary costing. Um, I still have a few more parts to order and of course I have to get the heads back from the machine shop, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to update you on things before too long. Catch you then. Thank you.